Hey, it's Steve. Today, we're going to take a look at the Apex L 12 by 50 monocular and see if this is something you might want to consider buying. So first off, here's a quick look at how this comes box. It comes in a fairly small package. The monocular itself is contained within the small carry case. You do get a little hand strap for the side of it. And of course, the typical little cleaning cloth as well. So anyway, let's take a look at the specifications of this monocular. So this does give you 50 millimeters of aperture, so it is a fairly large optic, which will collect a lot of light for you. However, it does have 12x magnification. Now, uh, 12x is a little higher than I'd really like in a monocular like this. I'd really prefer it to be like 10x because it's hard to hold 12x steady, but it's easier to hold this steady than you might think. I find that it's pretty comparable to a pair of 10x binoculars. So. If you can hold a pair of binoculars that have a 10x magnification steady enough to view what you want to view, then you'll be able to hold this monocular steady with, with a 12x magnification. So again, you have to kind of just feel that out for yourself and what you can typically hold steady and what you can't. But again, being lighter weight, you can hold a little bit higher magnification steady than you might otherwise think. Now the true field of view is a little bit iffy. The, the monocular itself says 5.5 degrees. The manual says it's 5.1 degrees. I didn't do a actual measurement to nail down exactly what the, the full field of view was, but it is in that range somewhere. The apparent field of view is around 60 degrees, but just ballparking it uh, based on my other set of optics that I have, it was around 60 degrees, plus or minus a little bit. Uh, the weight came in at about 17 and a half ounces or 497 grams. So again, lighter than a typical set of binoculars. And one really nice feature of this monocular is that it does have a very large range of focus. So you can focus from close up to, to infinity and I can reach focus both with and without my glasses, which is definitely a very, very nice thing for me because as my eyes have aged, I've now gone into progressive lenses and it's really hard, at least with my lenses, to get everything in focus because the prescription varies, you know, as you go up and down in my glasses. And so I end up getting part of the view in focus, part of the view out of focus, and it's kind of a mess. Plus holding things right to my eye, I'm able to block out stray light, which can definitely help improve the view a lot as well. This monocular is threaded for a quarter inch tripod mount, and so you can easily put this on a tripod without any additional adapter. Uh, the only thing you have to watch out for though is that it does have you know a slope base to it there, and so if your mounting plate is too large, it may not be able to uh, mount securely just because you can't because of the angle you can't quite get it fully attached very well so you may have to get some kind of adapter if you do have a large mounting plate but on my manfrotto tripod the plate that came with that uh, has no problem attaching to the monocular and working fine on that tripod in terms of the overall construction it is partially coated in sort of a plastic rubbery type material uh, however there is exposed uh, anodized metal on portions of it as well around the front lens uh, around the uh, the top where the focuser is in that section there and so there are some areas that will likely get scratched up over time just being the exposed anodized metal but overall uh, a very solid robust construction from overall feel it is stated to be fully waterproof however i have not actually tested that to see if it would in fact leak if i left it submerged in water for any length of time but that's not something i ever plan on doing so but the bottom line though is that you should be able to take it outside in the rain and it shouldn't have any major issues so of course it's always a little bit hard to convey how well the optics perform in something without taking photos uh, through it However, unlike a telescope, which you can easily attach a camera to, it's a little bit harder to do that with a monocular or a set of binoculars. So Apexel also has this uh, adapter that I was able to get that allows you to you know, mount your phone to any set of optics like a binocular where it just kind of clamps on there. And so this is what I use to mount my iPhone 13 Pro to the monocular and all the pictures and videos you see here were taken with my iPhones. So after a week, I did finally have a clear evening. I was able to take some imagery of the moon as well as some star fields. So I pointed the monocular at Orion and then mounted the phone on there, used the Nocturne app, which does sort of a uh, long exposure, you know, real time video uh, of whatever you're looking at. And you can do long exposure photography that way as well. But I was able to get some video looking at Orion here. So you can see the sort of Orion here and the great Orion Nebula and get an idea of the overall field of view and how that looked. And then I went up to the belt of Orion 
And you can see there is some false color here around the brighter stars. Now this monocular does have ED glass in it, but it's not a high-end ED glass. So even though it does help reduce false color, there is still some false color that's visible. Now, visually, you don't see a lot of this false color. Now, obviously the camera does pick up a broader range of color than your eye does. And so the blue fringing here is not nearly as prominent visually as it is with the camera view here. But nonetheless, uh, even though it does have uh, some enhancement to the optics with the ED glass. It's not by any means fully apochromatic, so do still expect to see a little bit of blue fringing around brighter objects uh, that you might be looking at. I did also point the monocular at the moon, so you can kind of see that you can kind of use this as a general low power telescope or a telephoto lens for your phone, you know, and that kind of thing as well. So you can use it for that type of purpose. And so overall, I was able to get some pretty nice views of the moon. You can see here though, uh, on the edge of the moon, there is some of the yellow on the inside of the edge and a little bit of that purple color on the outside. So again, not all the color is fully controlled with the optics of this monocular, but again, it's not a very expensive set of optics anyway. And so, you know, you're not gonna be getting really high level correction with these optics, but I think for the price, they're fine. And overall, I was pleased with the views I was able to get. I also did some photography of some flowers in the yard to kind of push it and see how things would do on a white daffodil as well as some purple hyacinths. And so you can kind of see the views of those flowers here as well. And right after taking the photos of the flowers, I did point the monocular at the sun as well. And using a handheld solar filter in front of the monocular, I was able to get some imagery of some of the sunspots on the sun that day as well. So, so the views through this monocular are fine. Again, the optics are not really high end, but overall, I think it performs fine for the price. Just a few words about why you might want to buy a monocular in the first place. If you don't have any optics at all, you should buy a pair of binoculars first. You're gonna get a lot more use out of these. You get to use both of your eyes. You're gonna get better views. You know, a whole lot uh, goes along with being able to use both of your eyes just in terms of comfort and everything else as well. And so this is the best option if you don't have anything yet. But if you already have multiple pairs of binoculars, maybe you already have spotting scopes, telescopes, everything else, then a monocular might be something to consider. The, the big advantage of a monocular, obviously, is that being only half of a pair of binoculars, you have something that is smaller and lighter weight. And this can be really important in a few scenarios. The biggest ones are gonna be, obviously, if you're gonna be outdoors, hiking, backpacking, that kind of thing, where weight and size can be pretty important things to consider. If you're backpacking, every few ounces matters. You're trying to shave off a few ounces off everything that you're bringing. Uh, every, every little bit of size helps to try to get all of your gear into one pack. You're carrying it around for multiple days. You know, those little things kind of add up. So having something that's smaller can be a good option. And maybe this can be one of those things where you just can't really bring a pair of binoculars because of the size and weight. But something like this, which is smaller and lighter weight, might still fit in your pack and something that you can carry with you. This, this can also be a great option for those times when you don't have a pack to carry and you don't want to have a set of binoculars around your neck kind of bouncing on your chest and that kind of thing. Because these are a lot smaller, they can fit into a jacket pocket pretty easily. I've actually been using this on my dog walks every evening. I can actually even fit this in my jeans pocket. And so I can pretty much take this with me every time I go out with the dogs. And so when I pass the wooded areas, if I see a coyote or, or, or a lot of times I'll see hawks and things like that there, I can pull out the monocular and take a look at it. And it's, it's nice to have on hand because I don't really want to carry binoculars with me. And I don't want to carry a backpack or anything like that. And so having something that can fit in a pocket is really handy. This, this also fits in the drink holder of my backpack, which is a handy way to carry it for easy access. Uh, and it also can fit in a drink holder in a car. So that's another option to consider as well. So anyway, there's a few reasons why you might want a monocular. But really, again, it's one of those specialized optics where you know, you may not have a use for it, but if you do, it can be handy to have. So anyway, I think this monocular can be a nice addition to your set of optics if you are looking to kind of just fill out something for those special use cases. You know, again, for the price, I think it's a decent value. If you are interested in picking one of these up, I will have a link in the description below to where you can do that and get a discount on the purchase of this monocular. Anyway, that's all for now, and thanks for watching. Bye.